Hello. You should believe people when they tell you who they are. Having Trump not only have had the codes, but now having the classified information for Americans and being able to put that out and share it in his resort with anyone and everyone who comes through should be terrifying to all Americans. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be shot. Stopped. He needs to be shot. Stopped. Relax. Don't worry. I'm not going to do three minutes of me cutting between clips for all the times that these people have encouraged exactly what we're now seeing play out throughout the last 10 years or so. I'm sure you've seen it a million times anyway. You know, the Trump campaign actually just put out a statement with all the receipts of this occurring, but I think we sort of know what's going on. So we're going to talk about the implications of this on the political climate, if things could get really ugly, what uh, the motivations are behind this both from the left and the right in the establishment, why people of all kinds attack Trump at all different scales, what we can even do, all sorts of good stuff that you need to know or else face the horrors of not understanding how the world works, and we don't want that for you. So first, we're going to go over some of the background information behind what happened this time around. So last Sunday, a 58-year-old man named Ryan Wesley Routh was fired upon by Secret Service agents less than 500 yards away from President Donald Trump. He was camped outside of Trump's golf route for 12 hours, I suppose without being spotted. Uh, and then his Secret Service agents were scanning the perimeter. They finally spotted him as his rifle was sticking out from where he was hiding, and they opened fire. He was positioned in that shrubbery with a scoped AK-47, a GoPro, and two backpacks, and once being fired upon, he ran to his black Nissan van, where he was spotted by a witness who chased him down and took photos of his car and his license plate, and he was then apprehended alive just a county north on I-95. And so once the name was announced, people, of course, did what they do. They found his Facebook, his Twitter, started looking into his past affiliations, and what they found is that Ryan Routh is a Ukraine sycophant, a Kamala supporter, a Democrat donor, and he is someone who, like a bunch of the media, believes that Donald Trump is a freaking threat to democracy and that freaking democracy's on the ballot. And shortly after his name was leaked, his social media on all platforms was wiped, but thankfully people were able to quickly archive it before that happened, which was not the case with Thomas Matthew Crooks, the Butler shooter, who we still know very little about. But we found out that Ryan Routh followed a few interesting people on Twitter, uh, such as Sue Kim, who's a former CIA official with ties to the intelligence community, which obviously has people kind of scratching their heads. You know, why does the second would-be Trump assassin follow this obscure Twitter account with less than 3,000 followers with connections to the CIA? The Rand Corporation, which is this neoconservative policy group, one of many, specializes in propaganda and leadership studies. He also did fundraisers and recruitment drives for the Foreign Legion in Ukraine, quickly denied any affiliation. He also claims to have met with members of pro-Ukraine congressional committee in an article where he was profiled or interviewed for the New York Times of all places. We have photos of him, too, with Biden-Harris administration officials. And beyond his escapades with Ukraine, he also has quite a long rap sheet of criminality in North Carolina, where he was arrested and let off on probation for possessing weapons of mass destruction, a fully automatic rifle in 2002. So now he's been apprehended. He's appeared in court. He's been charged with one count of possession of a firearm by a prohibited person and one count of possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial number. At the moment, I bet the libertarians are going to want him to get off on that, too. Um, at the moment, he's not being charged with anything else. No conspiracy charge, no attempted murder charge, assassination, life sentences, things like that. Now, of course, being an insane libtard will lead you to make a lot of insane choices and insane associations. It's kind of like a chicken versus egg thing. Are they an insane libtard so they did those things? Or did doing those things, making those associations make them into a libtard. It's definitely a mixture. I guess it's probably a little bit more of the former, but Trump puts out a statement after this saying, literally, I will never surrender. And you just have to love that because no one else would do that. No one else would acknowledge that these are all instances related to the plot of the establishment to take him out. They would put out some generic statement about condemning political violence as if it's just some lone wolf, some isolated asymmetrical thing, as opposed to Trump who's like, yes, they're trying to stop me. It's all the same. Wake up, patriot. Not to say that this would ever happen to them, by the way, because they're all just like total puppets. It's... And also not to suggest that, like, if even one-tenth of what has happened to Trump happened to them, they wouldn't just drop out immediately and go sit on the board of Boeing or some other company or just do consulting full-time and just lease the Rolodex out. Frankly, I don't regard disloyal R's as significantly different from leftists, the leftists who are publicly lamenting yet another failed assassination attempt against our president. These people all want Trump gone from politics, okay? Well, this is what that looks like because he's never going to quit. He's never going to surrender. They align themselves with the official position of the regime wanting Trump gone, and they think it makes a difference that they wouldn't support political violence or whatever, as if they're in the driver's seat. You make a deal with the devil, this is what you get. You have chosen your side. We're not going to forget this.
Donald Trump really is just on this quest to save America, and he keeps being protected by the friends he's shown kindness to along the way. Shinzo Abe, cats. Who knows? Who knows which guardian angel will reveal themselves next? Don't worry, Donald. It's not your time yet. There's too much ref for you to do. Donald, you have shown great kindness to us, so I grant you the status of honorary feline. You have nine lives, Donald. You are a cat in this way. All this loyalty to cats from the left, look who they choose. They don't respect you. You simply service them. They respect Donald Trump, and so they protect him. Truly an intelligent being after all. But regardless, these happenings remind me of COVID in a way, because it's not just the happenings themselves which are so troubling, but moreover, what it does to your view of people. Seeing the way they react, seeing how illusory this whole thing really is, how depraved and without conscience these people can become at the push of a button once the signal goes out. And you're seeing this all over the place, especially on Sunday. You know, I saw this one woman, she said something like, Erm, no ears were harmed, carry on with your Sunday afternoon. And I saw that and I just said, how reckless. And so I took it upon myself to engage with her in a meaningful way, trying to illustrate sort of the civic irresponsibility of that kind of rhetoric at such a crucial time in our nation's history. But I love how they invoke courage whenever it's to like, just, you know, their horrible behavior, like what, you don't like getting shot at? You don't like getting accosted by crackheads? What are you, a snowflake? What are you, some sort of beta male? But I could take your Zoloft away and your entire reality would crumble. It would fall apart. It'd be like when Woody opens up Buzz's helmet and he just starts <laughs> like spurging out. That's you. You're a sick person. Let us help you. Let us make America great again. These people were designed to be like this, by the way. It was commissioned. They were ordered. Because it's not just people on our side who want Trump gone because they want to go back to their like very lucrative gig of being controlled opposition, never having to be challenged. But the establishment which employs these people never expected for this to happen which is why they're acting in the ways that they are. This is what crashing out looks like. You have to understand, Donald Trump was never supposed to run. This was not supposed to happen. None of this was supposed to happen. Hillary Clinton was supposed to be president. We were supposed to slowly complete our transition into being a third world nation, into existing in a one party state. There was no Republican leadership. John McCain failed. Mitt Romney, that's the, they were doing their job just fine. Uh, Ron Paul was thwarted. Pat Buchanan was thwarted. They did not think that Donald Trump would run, let alone successfully, let alone on that platform, let alone to literally transition the party into his own. You look at it now, it's not perfect, but you look at the direction things are moving in, you look at who is absent from the RNC, look at who is taking over the RNC, look at who's leading his transition team, it's his family, it's loyalists. He's very aware of the problems that he's had, but now because he presents himself with a greater degree of sophistication, people are like mad at him, but this was the plan all along. This Trump had to become establishment to be successful. That's what a political project is. You can't win if your identity is always being the outsider. Eventually to win, you got to get in there and you got to make it yours. You can't always just be the guy who's outside pointing and yelling at the guys inside. He's now running the most right-wing campaign of any of our lifetimes, but he's getting away with it because he's preaching about it as, oh, it's just normal. It's a self-evident, common sense, and he's expected to win, which is why all of this is happening anyway. If Trump is successful, we will all be successful. Why would you not want that. They're not after Trump. They're after you. Trump is just in the way. It's that simple. Nobody has ever been treated like this in the history of our country, and it's because never has our country been ruled by such sinister people, and never have they felt so threatened as they obviously do by Donald Trump. And they create and they utilize through propaganda, chemicals, isolation, just very sick, maladjusted people who they can count on to join them in that hatred for normal Americans and anybody who can meaningfully stand up for them. So yeah, they're really just hoping he gets killed before he wins again, obviously. And if this guy hadn't been an idiot and stuck his rifle out past the tree line, who knows what would have happened just a few minutes later, but he's in custody now. He's smiling. He's laughing. He thinks it's like the funniest thing ever. But what's weird about the idea that he's crazy, which I don't think he is in the sense that people mean, if you recall, TDS was much worse in 2016 and 2020, but this really didn't happen then. People hated Trump a lot more just a few years ago. They were more willing to go scream about it in public, complain forever. Maybe it's different because he's out of office, but it's not like the media's chilled out at all. I don't know. Even now, people are less worried about Trump. His favorability is improving. Remember, he won in 2016 at like negative 24 favorability. Now it's at like negative eight. So people just aren't off put by him as much as they used to be. Yet we've had two of these instances now 
just in the last couple months. Okay. And in 2016, you didn't know it was going to happen. So perhaps maybe there was some more urgency. Maybe he really was going to be the worst freaking thing ever. But then he gets in office. You find out, okay, it's not the end of the world. So why would you be more worried about this going into 2024? Why would you be more motivated to do something like this now? Hmm. Well, for one, we should say these people's minds are literally broken. They've been melted. They have been radicalized by the mainstream media, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, I want to say I think we should really just support the president right now, really focus on that. That's our two-month timeline. When we have power, then we can launch investigations. Because if we don't have power, there's no point anyway. You're just asking different parts of the same machine to look into each other. You're asking the left hand to look into what the right hand is doing. Like, oh, well, the House Oversight Director subpoenaed the Secret Service Director for a hearing on the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. Okay, it's just different tentacles investigating each other. It's all one thing. There are no competing power structures representing separate interests in society. They're all part of the same regime. Even if they can hold each other accountable, they have no incentive to. And in fact, the incentive in the job description is to not do that explicitly. So it's good that Florida's launching its own investigation. I hope that something legitimate happens there. Good work from Governor DeSantis. Uh, speaking of good work, I don't know if you've been paying attention or anything, but we live in a society which is constantly uncomfortable and irritated and on edge. Everything else costs a million dollars and you're getting less for your money. We call this inflation. Take notes. Thankfully, however, there are companies like Undertack providing exceptional quality men's basics for your hard-earned dollar, which to clarify means that if you give them your money, they will give you their products. We call this being a real American patriot. Their socks are made of battle weave wool that's five times stronger than regular. Their ring-spun cotton hoodies and joggers are dangerously comfortable and every Patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three-pack. Look at our boy James rocking the Undertack hoodie just the other day. Do you think he was that cool before he got that hoodie? He wasn't. I was there. I'll tell you that right now. But he doesn't even have a Miata. Don't believe the lying press. The bottom line is that it is getting colder outside. You need the Patriot hoodies. You need the Patriot sweatpants. You need the Patriot socks. You need to pay these people to put clothes on your body. They even have stuff for women now. And if there's one thing women need to be doing nowadays, it's wearing more clothing. And thankfully, the engineers over at Undertack have devised a solution to this. You simply go to Undertack.com. That's Undertack.com. You get 20% off site-wide when you use my offer code DOYLE20. Exceptional comfort, twice the guarantee, a fraction of the price, and they donate a portion of their profits to organizations actively in the fight against human trafficking, which is basically uh, what we're going to be talking about later in the week. So it's like you don't even care something, you know, if you're not giving these people money. So stock up today, undertack.com. That's under tac.com. Offer code DOYLE20. Very epic. We continue. I want to say this about Trump. I have to say this about Trump. I have to say it because a subsequent assassination attempt later, people still don't seem to know what time it is. So many people still counter signaling Trump, complaining about Trump, just shooting arrows at him, saying he's not actually conservative, he's not actually America first. And we will address all of that because it's simply a misunderstanding of everything that's going on. But I'll say for now that that which is conservative is simply that which conserves the traditional American society. It's not really something you have to overthink. It occurs very naturally, as it did for a very long time. It's only disrupted when evil is allowed to syndicate and fester itself all throughout society. If you waved a magic wand, and got rid of all the propaganda and all the laws inspired by the propaganda and all the incentives created by those laws, things would more or less fall back into place within like two generations or so. All of this only happens because of the nonstop propaganda that you and everyone else is tuned into for eight to 10 hours a day. If that shuts off, nobody would just like think all of this is a good idea. Nobody would be compelled to defend all of this, take up some personal crusade against the opponents of all of this, which are just normal people. So I don't really think of conservatism as an ideology so much as I do whatever stops communists from ruining everything forever because they're just like evil and resentful. And funny enough, the class of people who worked really hard to synthesize it into an ideology that you can read about in a book, they oversaw the pillaging and transformation of this country into something unrecognizable to even themselves. So yeah, I don't really take too much of what they say seriously. If you're not able to actually conserve something, then you're just talking. And that's boring and it's a waste of time. And we've already wasted 50 years of time. So whatever you think is going on because Trump said this or you didn't like his answer on that, you need to understand he is trying to appeal right now to 300 million people. Ted Cruz would not have won in 2016. However you think Trump is doing right now electorally, 
all of the more traditional GOP type figures are down a lot relative to him in states that you need to win the election in swing states. So if you want someone to get up there and just repeat the same feel good sentiment about traditional values, but then not actually win or do anything about it, fine, doors right there, wish you luck. Because it happens to be the case that every other person who did that sold you out. And the only real victory for social conservatives in decades came from Donald Trump, who ran not as Chungus Moral Man 5.0, but as a nationalist who kept his word and paid dividends to social conservatives. If the left consolidates permanent political power through another amnesty, which is what they're talking about, and which is why they've allowed for 15 million people to just flood into the country in the last four years, then everything you claim to oppose so strongly is going to happen. And it will be impossible to do anything about it. Pretty much. And I understand the frustration, like, don't get me wrong. I've never met a rights confiscating policy I didn't like, but it's not so much a question about what we want to happen so much as it is how we actually get there. And there's no scenario where you get there by leaning into all of the policies, which are statistically the most off-putting to the average middle American voter who, because of demographic change, you really need to show up for you. So however compromised and unthreatening and part of the establishment you think Trump is, which is likely just due to like prolonged exposure and normalization in your mind, it's been 10 years of this now. He's identical now on the issues to what he was expressing in 2016. And if anything, he's actually improved, which is literally just true. Like, go back and look it up if you can't wait until we do the deep dive on this. So if the establishment, which you claim to have such a problem with, were actually not threatened by him, then this all would not be happening, just as it did not happen to anyone else who apparently was so based and so brave because they stood up and they said into a microphone that we have to freaking preserve traditional family values. I agree. But like we said in the last video, do not confuse what makes your enemy's eyes roll with what is actually threatening to them. We had guys that said that for decades and they did nothing. We did nothing but lose. The regime stays in power because of the importation of a permanent underclass to displace Americans ethnically, culturally, politically, economically, in every which way. Immigration is their power. It's the source of it. Nobody spoke about immigration until Donald Trump. You would get blacklisted in the 2000s from mainstream conservative publications for speaking about immigration, for hinting at attitudes towards immigration, which Donald Trump has now made central to his campaign quite successfully. So you can get up on your soapbox all you want, wave your finger at Donald Trump. I hope you feel very brave for doing so. But at the end of the day, unless you're willing to go after immigration, nobody is threatened by a single thing you have to say because you're never going to make any progress, which is why you're not getting shot at every six weeks. And he is political theater. That's when you say something that offends my sensibilities, and then I say something that epically owns you, and none of this really matters, but we do this dance in perpetuity while, meanwhile, 60 million people move into the country, and then all of a sudden, everything's different now, and I have no power to do anything about it. Hmm. That's a lot of wasted time, right? It's just politics 101. It's friends and enemies. Who are our friends? Who are our enemies? Everybody gets so caught up in the what, they neglect the how. The what ceases to exist without the how. So if the people you know are your enemies hate Trump and you agree with 70% of what Trump's about, then it might be time to make a decision. Consider your position carefully. What other real options do you have available to you right now to improve your life and your political situation within the next six months? You know, I don't think anyone has done more to articulate why Trump is so important than myself. And I did it because somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. It is imperative to our success that people understand that Trump actually is special and he is unique and he provides very special and unique opportunities for us. So I recommend checking all those videos out. But yes, all of these things happening to Trump, all of these things lining up, all these coincidences, but he remains safe. He remains protected. Divine intervention is actually a more realistic explanation than chance. Um, but looking at the case from Sunday, like literally looking at this guy, you have to agree it rings a bell, right? You must understand the profile of the average dysgenic leftist, the Antifa foot soldier. I'm not saying this guy is Antifa, but it's literally all the same thing anyway. Like it doesn't really matter what uniform it wants to wear or what bumper sticker it wants to put on its car. It's all the same thing. These people's lives are miserable. They're losers and they can only achieve something by being the best ally against Hitler or whatever. There's no greater thing for white men who cannot escape that leftist framework because they're too weak to reject it than to be the top ally, to give the most for the freaking poor people. Theater Kid Occupied Government explains this, by the way. The only way for libtard whites to ascend hierarchy, to satisfy their natural drive for that, is to sacrifice themselves for gay race communism. Well, I'm going to be the best ally. It's like, there's a reason they all look like this. There's a reason that all of the Antifa mugshots just have that look. Physiognomy is real. 
Politics is just biology. That's not a crazy idea. That's what Ben Shapiro told me. I got that take from Ben Shapiro. He told me to read a biology textbook to learn about the two genders, and I just I kept going, and I never looked back. Communism has always been that. It has always been the ideology of freaks and losers, the incapable, the maladjusted. They are always going to have a bone to pick with the capable and with the well-turned-out. You can explain it with a little party platform or a tome or whatever. You wear the truth on your face, whether or not you want to. And it's not to ignore the other factors at play, but just sort of to emphasize how profoundly disturbed and messed up these people are. They are the prime targets for radicalization. And of course, the FBI said during the press conference that they were monitoring this guy since 2019 because he was reported to them for possessing firearms as a felon on the radar every time, of course. He was donating exclusively to Democrats since 2019. Well, he's crazy. Okay, what do you mean by that? Obviously, he was sane enough to be highlighted by these mainstream media publications for his efforts, profiled by the New York Times, rubbing shoulders with all these different people. What's insane, exactly? He was just acting out what liberals have talked about doing for years now. How is he insane if he just believed the words these people were saying to him every night when he would turn on his television? Like, he represents a current of publicly endorsed mainstream liberal thought. He even brought a GoPro. He wanted everyone to see the footage of him killing Trump. The theater kid must perform, right? So yeah, don't expect the media or the establishment to lower the temperature. I mean, they had the opportunity to do that after the last time, and they did it for maybe, what, a day? Fear-mongering is all they know how to do. They need to be charged. I don't throw that around lightly, by the way. Treason, sedition, inciting violence, these are real crimes. Eventually, we are going to have to go after these people for committing these crimes. This country would be a lot safer if journalists started facing legal consequences for inciting violence, which is what they do. And they know that's what they do. They would not be journalists if they could not do that. Find me a great man of history. I will show you where he stated that journalists are scum. They always have been, and they always will be. From Napoleon to Nixon, and further each way, these people are lower than mold. How else do we understand this? What else is this if not just a culmination of 10 years of wanting Trump gone? That's why I don't want to get too lost in the details behind it, immediately jump to like, my CIA, or whatever. It's like too simple of an explanation. It doesn't square with what we've seen happening for the last 10 years. I'm not saying it's not CIA. Typically, though, when people say that, they're referencing this like leftist view of the CIA as this omnipotent anti-communist force. And so people hear CIA and they're like, yup, just like Kennedy. And it's just like, okay, just, just like this one Latin American country. It's like, okay. Their goal was to physically destroy his head on live TV, not some grainy zap rooter film from a hundred yards away. They wanted to shatter his skull and plaster the internet with celebratory 4K videos. Don't forget that. They would have merchandised it. You'd have had coworkers the following Monday drinking out of coffee mugs with that, like, printed on it. For the rest of your life, every time you tweeted something, it would be reaction gifts of black women laughing, office reaction, Jim Halpert, you know what? Like, that was their goal for the assassination of our president. That was what was supposed to happen. That's what the GoPro was for. That's why it's only some gun charges when you wait 12 hours outside of a golf course to assassinate a former president. And he had a GoPro because he wanted to film it. He knew what he was supposed to do. Imagine what would happen if you did this to Bill Clinton or George Bush, any other living former president, you would be done. And obviously, you should not do that. But know that I don't say this to, like, illustrate the hypocrisy, but the rot. And we are going to clear the rot. We are going to cleanse the DOJ. And let's be honest with ourselves. We know the score. We can call it a spade. Assigning blame is tricky. There are a lot of interests. And I think that getting too specific with that is actually going to be counterproductive. We can point to the reasons, but maybe the reasons aren't the point. Like, I know that Fox News wants to say it's Iran. And I know that the establishment wants them out, too. Like, there's all this stuff. Just for our two-month timeline, maybe it doesn't really matter for at least two months what the specific reason was, practically speaking, because until we can get back into power, we can't actually do anything about it anyway. And at the end of the day, we know why we're under fire. We know what direction to keep pushing in and how long will it be before we even get those details. It took us how long to get the details about the shooter in Tennessee and this right before an election, the most politically significant moment since 9-11. Yeah, and I'm not saying the details aren't important. I want to know the details, but the reason is that you don't want to get too specific when you start trying to piece these things together because you're going to get yourself lost in the weeds. You're probably, statistically speaking, going to cross wires. You're going to bump into some walls because chances are you're not 100% right and it can be easily debunked and then people aren't going to take you seriously and that does harm your goal. If you know for sure, awesome. But otherwise, you probably will have essentially constructed like some straw man, even though you may very well have been well-intentioned. So you don't want to bet on yourself being 99% correct. That's a very small target to hit. But 
You can bet on yourself being 80% correct. That's a lot better, practically speaking. You can work with that. You can make that palatable to the right people, bring them on board, because in practice, we all know what's going on. We all know what's happening, and we all know what we need to do to get it to stop. And because all of these different interests have coalesced to attack Donald Trump, that's why we give no quarter to those who attack him, to those who align themselves against the president as just another one of those many interests. Maybe they tell themselves they're based. They've got their own little reason for it, whatever. They are all doing the same thing, which is attack the president, but they do it at different scales and they do it for different reasons. Who cares? Who cares? In practice, no difference. You are aligned with the enemy. You are making it more difficult for our best and our only option to succeed. But people just don't actually have a worldview anymore. They basically, they like exist to independently react in the present to every new piece of information which they are shown online. And it actually breaks them. Just all these people without any sort of coherent worldviews or background knowledge to fall back on. They're just constantly having their brains turned into scrambled eggs by overexposure to information on the internet. Just constantly being like jerked around in different directions by grifters farming for engagement. And watching it happen sucks. It's disappointing. And to clarify, I'm not exonerating anyone or anything. As we've said forever, these are just all organs of the same disgusting thing. I don't want any wires to get crossed by focusing too much on one thing or trying to assign blame to some other thing. Think about it this way. And I'm obviously not calling for anything, but I bring this up to illustrate a point. Do you think that you could get on a roof with a rifle anywhere within a mile of some other figure or that any of these mistakes would have occurred for some other figure? Uh, absolutely not. That would never happen. It's unimaginable. And that's good. It's good when the U.S. Secret Service does its job. We want that to happen always, of course. But why does it happen selectively? That's what this patriot wants to know. Oh, is it malice? Is it incompetence? Well, you must transcend the binary, patriot. Incompetence can be used maliciously. In fact, that's actually a great idea because then you have plausible deniability because there's always going to be a bunch of people who are like, Erm, never attribute to malice what can be explained by incompetence. Haven't you heard of Hanlon's razor? Hey, uh, you should say that underwater and then also like never come back up. What's malicious incompetence? DEI, understaffing, underfunding. Here's what malicious incompetence looks like. The Secret Service is under the Department of Homeland Security, uh, which is also responsible for things like the border, okay? But it's a part of the DHS, which is, of course, controlled by the regime, which might introduce some conflict of interest, right? If now a division of the regime is tasked with providing security for the man who's accurately proclaiming himself to be the greatest threat to it, he should have his own private security with him at all times, comprised exclusively of loyalists, just like every other man in his position throughout history has had. They deliberately starved Trump's security team of the resources that it needs. They consistently denied requests for increased security when Trump's team was like, hello, may we please have increased security? So Trump's team is understaffed. They don't have enough resources. They're spread thin. And then the DHS diverts even more resources to some spontaneous Jill Biden event that just so happens to be in the same area as the Trump event. Then the DHS in surveying the area says that, and this is something that anyone who's worked in security or even just played a video game will tell you. Uh, and I know that because I've talked to them, not the video game guy, that's me, but like guys who have done high profile security for celebrities, public figures, things of that nature. The place where the gunman was set up, that's like the obvious place that you're making sure is locked down. But then we're told not to worry. There are experts in charge. Everything is fine. Mistakes happen. This is the same impulse, by the way, that drives people to be off put by Donald Trump in the first place. Like this guy's brash. He's immature. He's unsophisticated. The system works. Our system works. There's nothing else going on. That's what crazy people think because that's what the screen people said. It's not perfect, but nothing is. So why do we need him? Like they are incapable of getting it. The same way Trump moving his head out of the path of the bullet at the last second defies chance and is actually better explained by God than like the idea that it was just a freaking coincidence. The odds of all these things lining up so perfectly also defies chance and implies the hand of something else. It, it's better explained by that than just like, damn, that's crazy. Wow. What a mistake that was. Whoops. Regardless, the good news is that this is plenty of justification for Trump's DOJ to go after anarchist and communist terror groups, of which there are plenty. And also, their OPSEC sucks because it's never had to be good because the state runs cover for them because it likes them. It would be the easiest thing to have occurred ever. It'd be like finding hay in a haystack. But make no mistake, that is what happened. God protected the president. Shinzo Abe, Donald Trump's guardian angel, protected the president. It is nothing short of a miracle. You couldn't think of something more miraculous to have occurred on American soil in the last 50 years if you dedicated an afternoon to it. It's just like, seriously, a sudden gust of crosswind and the president lives, but not without battle scars. And they really hated that, didn't they? That he immediately turned to the crowd and said, I'm fine. 
keep fighting. Shots fired, the president's down, multiple people injured, but no one runs. I spend a lot of time on Twitter watching videos of shots going off in public. I'm in some pretty silly group chats. The first thing everybody does is they duck and they run and they get out of there. It's chaos. But these people, they sit there with bated breath, silent prayers. They are peering into the nation's uncertain future. What happens next? And then he stands and they applaud. He thrusts his fist into the air and they leap and they shout with joy. A leader who loves his people, a people who love their leader. He later on, he says, I needed them to know that everything is okay. His first instinct was not to get off stage to safety. Nobody knows what's going on. The shooter's still active. There could be multiple. He says, no, I need to let them know that we're still fighting. Never surrender. Above everything. Almost anything else. They hate that display of strength, and they hate that the public responds to it. Think about it. When you're a Democrat, your currency is whining like a bitch. If this had happened to a Democrat, they'd have to go on 60 Minutes the next night, be crying crocodile tears talking about relating to the experience of American school children or something like that, except, except of course, for the ones in Tennessee. But Trump raises his fist. He says, who cares? That's American masculinity. That's what a hero looks like. People talk about Reagan's, you know, missed me. The balloon pop moment from 50 years ago, even though that was scripted, okay? How about you literally just shot me in the head 30 seconds ago, but I'm still standing. I'm still fighting. You couldn't write that. And the left thinks it's staged because they can't comprehend courage or heroism when they see it in real life. It has to be within a controlled environment, like a soundstage. It has to be within the context of a Marvel movie. And the enemy has to be the evil freaking bad guy. The enemy can't be the good guy, because then what does that make me, right? This is the culmination of everything. That happening. That reaction, that strength and instinct, all of Trump's life of showmanship prepared him for that moment. The art of the deal, all of the reality TV and the tabloid media in New York, his friendship with Vince McMahon, the political career, all to stay on stage and halt his own security detail to stay on stage one instant longer for the public to say, fight, fight, fight. And the crowd doesn't flinch. They don't disperse. They scream. They roar for their president, the American lion, the greatest American alive, their hero. You wanted to live in interesting times, you will never see anything like this man again. Donald Trump, the man in the red tie and in the red hat who will make America great again. By the hand of God, the man who descended from the golden escalator, our lion with the golden mane, our champion. Yeah, I love this man, okay? What inspires you? Without him and only him, do you know where we would be right now? We would be finishing up the second half of President Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine would be beating our ticket, our Jeb Bush, Nikki Haley ticket, and all they'd be talking about is flat taxes and protecting our allies and how a corporation is technically just a piece of paper, so you really can't demonize it. But of course, now everybody wants to come back on and support Trump. That's fine. Hey, that's great. We'll keep it that way, right? I'm glad you finally understand. I wanted Trump gone, but not like this. You can't put the genie back in the bottle like that, idiot. This is what you wanted. You said you didn't want Trump anymore. You hitched your wagon elsewhere. There will be no quarter given to those who have betrayed the president and his movement. You wanted Trump out of politics, right? So do they. And this is what that looks like because he will never quit. There's no civil war. It would just be over. Yeah, no, there's not going to be a civil, like we weren't an inch away from civil war. People were saying that. People throw that prediction around way too liberally. It's my fault. I accept that. And I had videos I was going to do earlier this year explaining why civil war, secession, collapse, very unlikely among other things. I didn't put them out. I apologize for not putting a stop to the stupidity. But to put it briefly, no there would not be a civil war. You think that a party that tried to get rid of Donald Trump would organize to fight a war because of his death? Because there is no organization now, so it, it would have to be created. Trump has no successor. Had the assassins succeeded in any of these cases, American patriots would have been left without a leader. Do you know what happens when people don't have a leader? Things go back to normal very quickly. I'm sure that you would have seen some asymmetrical violence, but that's all that it would have been. And then the DOJ would mobilize federal law enforcement and the national security Security state to throw those people in prison for the rest of their lives. You thought an unguided tour of the Capitol was bad? Even that triggered the largest investigation in DOJ history. Imagine when the regime doesn't have to worry about its biggest enemy anymore. That's why, frankly, I don't really buy the like assassination insurance angle. People have been saying, well, you know, Trump needs to pick someone like him to be vice president because if he picks someone that's like some establishment person, then the deep state's going to take him out so that they could just have the establishment person guy become president. But if the vice president weren't like that, uh, then that wouldn't happen because there would be no point to it. Look, I like a lot of these guys. I really do. I like J.D. Vance. I think he's a great pick. If you want me to talk about that more, we can do that. But the reality of our situation is that they are not Donald Trump. I'm sorry, it's what it is. It's not to say these people aren't promising that they don't have bright futures, but if push comes to shove tomorrow, 
I think it would be a tall order to expect anybody to just fill Donald Trump's shoes. They want to eliminate Trump because he is the avatar of the American spirit. If they got him out of the picture, I honestly don't think they'd really care about his VP succeeding him. I'm sure there would be big talk from them and there would be respect paid and they'd pretend that they weren't doing this to Trump, all these other things. But the reality of our situation, as we all know, and as we all lament, the swamp has not been drained. Republican leadership, to the extent that we want to even say that that exists, would view this happening as like a back alley surgery to remove a tumor. It's ugly, it's not clean, it's dangerous, but oh, thank God that problem's taken care of. It's chemotherapy. It's taking medication with some bad side effects to remove an irritant from your system. That's how they view Donald Trump, as an irritant to be put up with until hopefully they no longer have to deal with him anymore. All of that to say that the Republican establishment could heal itself without Trump, at least for the time being. Four years from now, that's going to be a pretty different story. Just as right now, it's a different story from what it was in 2020, and especially since 2016. Things are getting a lot better. They're moving along as they should. It's working, but that doesn't mean that all of the pieces are in place yet. So yeah, God forbid something terrible happens. Things would not go right back to normal, right back to George Bush, Mitt Romney types, nothing like that. But they certainly would not continue in the direction that they're going right now, let alone at the rate that they're going right now. And I would like to be wrong about that because it would make the next two months much less worrisome, but I don't think that I am. There's just not a person on stage right now who can inspire the energy and the loyalty and the vision and the optimism that Donald Trump can. And they know that. Maybe you think I'm crazy, but the ways that they are acting suggest that they know that, which is why they've done literally everything in their power for 10 years to stop him, culminating, of course, in events like these. And we should take this all very seriously because I know I'm the first guy to criticize worshiping the Second Amendment because it doesn't actually protect from tyranny. If it did, the lockdowns would not have happened and we would not be being invaded right now uh, against our will by literally every country on the planet. And I support gun ownership 100%. But unfortunately, what you are telling me about what this amendment does is not reflected by reality. So that's on you to square, not me. You know, it's better than disarming people, letting them keep their guns so they never do anything because they think they've got that as like some insurance policy that they'll definitely use once things arbitrarily cross some line, right? And then meanwhile, you just focus on destroying everything else. But anyway, uh, we have to take this very seriously because the alarming thing is that once assassination is on the table in a country like this, with the first blood being the leader of the opposition and the only leader that they have, it's no longer possible to lower the temperature at that point. Most people, even most people involved or interested in politics, whatever, they would of course return to business as usual um, quickly enough for it to probably be unsettling. But I worry about a scenario where the edges of the left and right start going tit for tat with things like this until the left just crushes it. Again, you thought J6 was bad. Imagine how bad it would be if things got real, even if only for a brief period. Nothing crazy, just trading like low-level targets back and forth because the left already operates with decentralized paramilitary units, which can operate with the blessing of the state. And if the right were put into a position where it's like, okay, you know what? Screw this. I don't think there's a way for cooler heads to prevail at that point. And I'm not talking about revolution or civil war. I'm talking about a few instances of asymmetrical, decentralized political violence, which would make what the DOJ is doing now uh, the largest investigation, again, in its history, people set to die in prison for walking around a building, it would make that look like a speeding ticket. And we don't want any of that to happen. We don't support that. And that's why the rhetoric right now from the left surrounding this is like genuinely unsettling because they're basically advertising that this is the direction that they want to move in. They're ready for that to happen. And when something breaks the ice, whether you know someone sets a world record or they invent a new product, when news gets out about that, People already start scheming how they're going to do it too, how they're going to throw their hat in that ring. When something becomes on the menu, people start to do it. Columbine High School, great example. You know, these kinds of escalations, they're tough to put back in the box. And I know that nothing ever happens, but sometimes things happening are like Hemingway said of bankruptcy. It's gradually and then suddenly. So we want to be very careful, want to keep our eyes open, and we also want to keep our ears open and simply never trust the people ever again who wanted him gone. They're either deceitful or they have horrible judgment. But now that he came literally within an inch of his life or perhaps within minutes of his life, of course, everyone who spent the last two years attacking him for different reasons, they want to grift off the imagery of the president raising his fist his blood runs down his face it's like if you've ever had a relative die or go to the hospital 
you know, it's always the family member who's like the biggest piece of garbage to them who shows up and makes it all about themselves. Me? I loved him the most. It's like, okay, I know we all have goldfish memory, but do you remember at the end of 2022, Trump is being blamed incorrectly for disappointing midterm results. DeSantis is polling at like 30%. He's built up this huge war chest thanks to help from the neocon donor class, the never Trump donor class. The media outlets are all hyping him up. He's preparing to launch a primary campaign against the president. You've got the lawfare building up against Trump. He's facing time in prison. You've, of course, still got the media coverage, but now it's coming from the right too. again, all these talking heads saying we have to move on. This man's literally wrestling to maintain control of his party. Where were these people then? They were attacking him, saying he's washed, saying he's compromised, saying he doesn't have it anymore. He's low energy. Yeah, the guy's 78 years old. He pushes his security detail away from him after being shot in the head so he could tell his public to fight. But what, because he's not throwing Jeb Bush around anymore? You get to decide when he goes off air good read on things. And you'll notice too, none of these people are saying, okay, you know what? I was wrong. We need Trump. They're acting like they were with him the whole time. Everyone else could see the writing on the wall. Why it's absolutely crucial that we have to support Donald Trump. But before the assassination, before the indictments, before the conviction, these people were all hot on Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis or Ramaswamy, and they're attacking Trump, nitpicking everything that he did or that he didn't do. They were sowing divisions, but now something like this happens, and suddenly, yep, I was with him the whole time. And it's not a competition. I don't mean to come off that way. If you want to support Trump, you're more than welcome to, obviously. But we are not going to forget who you are. These people, you're a snake. You have no conviction. You're not a true believer. You're just a grifter. It's like how everyone is best friends with Harry. We had this kid uh, in middle school, Harry. Everybody hated him because he was just like this really annoying kid. All he's just like this little twerp, like stocky and loud. He's also just weird, kind of bizarre character. He hung out with the weirder kids, but he wasn't like one of the nice weird kids. Anyway, one day we've got indoor rec because it was raining outside or something. Harry gets into this altercation with some other kid and this other kid nobody liked. Everyone hated this kid. He was a total punk and he throws like a kickball at Harry's face or something. Gives him a bloody nose. You should have seen the react. You'd have thought Princess Diana was brought back to life and then immediately died again. Like you've got guys being late to fourth hour so they could go to the office to sit with Harry. I remember literally seeing people rush over to like other circles of guys being like, bro, bro, they got Harry. <laughs> <laughs> just like rushing to the office guys are talking shit like dude i don't care who you are you don't do that to harry it's like bro my hands are shaking right now that's what i thought of that's the first thing that popped into my mind when everyone who was prepared to move on from trump all of a sudden they're like posting pictures of themselves in maga hats and they're like pretending like you know they've always been these huge pro-Trump people, like they weren't sharing anti-Trump talking points, supporting other candidates, like, no, sorry, you don't do that to Trump. My hands are shaking. Like, that's what I thought of immediately. You've gone back and forth on Trump personally. That's fine. That's your prerogative. It's these liars who I cannot stand, though. I've never seen so much casual disregard for the truth in my life, not a measure of integrity or shame. And the reason we have to exclude these people is because you can't trust them to do anything but what immediately benefits themselves. A lot of it can be explained by money, sure, but again, that's almost too forgiving. This is theater kid occupied government. Most of these people just want attention. They are the theater kids. This model works. It, it works everywhere. These are people who cozy up to Ron DeSantis, his staff. They're going to events, doing the same thing with Ramaswamy because he's younger. He's got money. They want to rub shoulders with these people. That's fine. These are fine people. It makes them feel good to give them something to report back to Thanksgiving. I don't have problems necessarily, but it's like, okay, you know, I'm not going to trust you ever again. You'll make a great representative someday, but you're a snake. So I know you think it's really smart. You're just like a politico. You're operating, but it's over for you. Uh, but that's of minor importance. What is of major importance is that the presidents and the vice presidents are making crowds chant for mass deportations. Focus on the North Star. Nobody else in the GOP is talking about mass deportations, which is literally like the forefront of Trump's campaign. Because of Trump, the crowds are cheering for it. They're holding up signs for it. And it's what has to happen. Without Trump, they're just pandering forever. It's just typical GOP cringe, typical GOP nonsense. But without any positive direction. You don't get the payout at the end. You just keep losing. Nobody else is leading this. That's the reality of our situation. And nobody else could have. I've been telling people for years, don't take Trump for granted. I know it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day I get it. Go back, watch the footage, go see what things were like before Trump or what they're like now without Trump. When people are trying to move on from Trump, that's Nikki Haley. That's Chris Christie, but people want a black pill. Okay. Why not get involved first? Black pill later. 
We need to get our guys involved. This will take a while. It's an ugly place we're in. Everyone's got to get their own little take. I understand. No one has skin in the game. I remember being criticized by people like two years ago because I said, yeah, you know, this is probably going to take a while. And then they're like, no, we need to do something now. I was like, what are you, what? What are you talking about? I thought we were all disagreements aside. I thought we were all on the same page. This is going to take a while to undo. I thought we at least agreed on that. And then I realized these people are genuinely low IQ. Like you say this to them, this is going to take a while. They don't hear that the same way that you and I hear that. Like, okay, given the circumstances, we all want the same thing, but I suppose it is true that it's going to take some time to get there. They literally hear that as thing I want, I can't have right now with no regard for what, why, or how. And then because they have low impulse control, high time preference, the whole nine yards, they lash out, they get angry, they strike you. So you have to feel badly for them. This is all very confusing to them, very agitated. It was never supposed to happen. They were never supposed to be cursed by literacy and the democratization of the internet, the low information voter, a civic concept itself, a repudiation of the franchise. Why would you ever want to have that? A low information voter. These should be incompatible. But yeah, I try to tell people that about how most people are just not literate and are not even capable of like understanding your language for what it is and instead can only perceive it in terms of themselves and how it either serves or interrupts their seeking of rewards. And they just laugh. They're like, huh, yeah, right? As if I told them just like a funny way of seeing the world because I'm a funny guy. It's like, no, I'm being completely serious. These people do not use language the same way that you do. If your model of the world says that they do, you're often going to be confused and you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be like, wait, what? why are they doing that? What's going on? Stop. I'm so puzzled. But if your model of the world says that language to them is understood more in like a Pavlovian sense where they're just making whatever sounds or transcribing whatever shapes are needed to get them what they want as soon as possible. Well, then all of a sudden their behavior makes a lot more sense and you won't be so frustrated and confused all the time. And then you'll thank me. But yeah, I started laughing at the end of the last video when I said this because it, you know, it is funny how we talk so much and we analyze things at such depth and we go all the way around the block and then we get right back to, and that's why we have to vote for Donald Trump in November. But it's true. That's our next best move. I'm not saying you can't criticize the president. Nobody is beyond criticism. But if you can imagine like a spectrum of all the possible scenarios mapped for times to criticize the president, like worst times compared to best times, can you at least understand that we're probably a little bit closer to the former, right? And vice versa, when it's like probably time to support the president, that's probably where we're closer to right now, two months out from election day, they're shooting bullets at his face. Maybe it's time to give the guy a little bit of love. You know, the guy that just took a bullet for you, can you maybe just relax a little? Oh, what? So just because he took a bullet for us, that means we can't criticize him? That's not what I'm saying, you caveman. But honestly, yeah, you know what, fine. You. you can't criticize the president. It's illegal now. He left a skyscraper penthouse overlooking Central Park to take bullets for you. What have you done? I'm sorry. I thought we were keeping score. He needs our support. Pray for the president. Pray for the lion. If you stand against Trump, you're not an American. And if you can't bring yourself to, I don't know, do it because you're just so strong in your conviction, you can't support the candidate who will give you more of what you want because it's not everything you want. You're just like so convicted and principled. Okay, that's your prerogative, but don't do it for yourself then. Why can't you do it for the people who have been, I don't know, murdered for supporting their president? A man woke up two months ago to go hear his president speak and he was killed for it. And every member of the media who has spent the last decade inciting this, they all wear his blood on their hands and there will have to be accountability. There's no other way. The American people have to have justice justice for the crimes committed against them by these freaks, but there won't be accountability and there can't be justice if we lose. And of course, the running cover for these things, loud noises at a rally, shooting at a rally, incidents at a golf course. No, these were assassination attempts. These people assemble the weapon, they load it, they place the weapon, they give everybody within eyesight like hits of meth, and then they think their innocence is maintained because they didn't physically pull the trigger. Aaron Danielson, Ashley Babbitt, now Corey Comparator. Please do not forget to pray for his family. It's not the first time this has happened, and it won't be the last, but soon we will mobilize federal law enforcement against these terrorist networks and send them all to rotten Gitmo forever. But I will say, like I tweeted out, it is interesting that if you shoot into a crowd of Trump supporters, like in Butler, you hit hardworking men adored by their families. Whereas if you shoot into a crowd of leftists, like in Kenosha, you hit convicted sex offenders and pedophiles. Isn't it kind of funny how that works? Makes you really wonder, what are the odds of those dice rolls, right? Oh yeah, also the leftists were trying to kill you and burn the city down. Uh, and the Trump supporters were just trying to make America great again, if that sort of informs your thinking at all, your experience with the thought experiment. Hey, just a data point for you to consider. At the very least, we can't be negative. Stop blackpilling. Things could be so much worse. Things were almost so much worse. It was almost over, in an instant, lights out, set back decades. 
at least another 10 years. Oh, but we're done with Trump. We want to move on to somebody who's serious, somebody who's actually, yeah, they're done with Trump too. That's what that looks like in practice. He's gone too far. He's a symbol. He's transcended his own identity. You think they'd let him just walk away? They can't. But people want to act like spoiled brats. Well, I hate my parents. I wish I'd never been born. I wish I was adopted. I want to run away. And then you see what that actually looks like and it changes things, doesn't it? You get outside the little toy bag and the sun goes down and you go right back home. You get a taste of where we'd be at without this guy. Sobers you up pretty quickly, doesn't it? You want Trump gone? Yeah, get in line. Multiple impeachments, dozens of felony charges, the Mueller investigation, the false insurrection narrative, nonstop media lies, literally spying on his campaign. GOP sabotage in 2015 and 2016, Tell, we'll leave that timeline pending. The primary campaigns against him, the leaks, the betrayals, assassination attempts, literally being shot in the head. He's still standing, fist in the air. It was all varying degrees of wanting Trump gone, different manifestations of wanting Trump gone, but he's still here with a willpower filled by Diet Coke and Big Macs. The man in the red hat and in the red tie is going to make America great again, and there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. There's never been and there never will be another one like him. The only man who could, which all of our enemies know, and the only man that will. They made fun of him for how he drinks his water, and he took a bullet and walked it off. There's a man with a rifle waiting for him in the bushes. He's back out on the course the next day. A bee sting would have elicited a stronger reaction. And here's the thing too, Trump's not an idiot. Every time they escalate their attacks on this guy, people always say, oh, we're just gonna make him even better. Yes, you are correct. Imagine the scale. He knows that a 20 year old rat with a rifle doesn't get on a rooftop 100 yards away from him. He knows that. He knows that these coincidences are a little bit too coincidental. He made his name in Manhattan real estate. I promise you, he's got a decent head on his shoulders. People will give the benefit of the doubt to everybody but the guy who just took a bullet for them. I promise he's got a decent head on his shoulders. He's very aware of what's going on. He almost lost his life, literally came within an inch of losing his life. I'd wager that less than one in 1,000 of the people who are criticizing him right now can relate to that. So maybe just relax, dial it back, give him your support. Hey, you took a bullet for us. Fair enough. We'll stand with you. But everyone wants to move on from Trump. They want to throw arrows. They have an idea of what they want. They want it right now. And so they just like vomit out words until they think that they're going to get it. Look back to that 2024 primary debate stage. That's what the GOP looks like without Trump. Infiltration works. We can fill these positions. It'll take 20 years, but we can do it. It works. How do you think we got here in the first place? You know, when I talk to my friends who work behind the scenes, I always get the same question. Hey, uh, do you know anyone who needs a job? You need to get involved. President Trump just took a bullet for you. He's at risk every day of taking more bullets for you. You can do something for him too. Because it's really, it's not even for him. It's for you. It makes your country into something that you can be proud of again. And that your children will thank you for restoring. Hey guys, if you like this video, support Donald Trump for president. That's all you have to do. I'm not even going to make you leave a thumbs up. I'm not even going to tell you that it makes my day when I see that number, when I see the pixels on my screen arranged into that shape to communicate that information to me. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to ask that of you. It's not incumbent upon you to do anything but support Donald Trump. But if you want to leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, turn on notifications, subscribe to the channel and share the video with a fellow patriot, I'm not going to come after you for that. I'm not going to say it's the worst thing to have ever happened. Uh, the worst thing to have ever happened is the idea that you would not support Donald Trump. I can barely say that. I can barely speak those words. I can, I can barely bring myself to entertain a scenario where I have not convinced you to, to, to support Donald Trump. I don't even, I would be beside myself. I don't know what I would do. I, I would take a long walk off a short pier if that was the outcome of all of this. That would be sad. That would be the saddest words of pen and tongue or whatever the line is. I don't know. The voice is a little scratchy. That's my sacrifice for President Trump. What's yours? Just freaking support the president, dude. Freaking be a decent human being. Support Donald Trump. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. God bless President Trump. God bless the United States of America. You're doing a fantastic job and everybody loves you. We'll see you next time. Poof.